Uh, good morning. How are you all doing? And um, I think my task this morning is to use the, what we're doing on the San Joaquin River as an example of partnership building um, and plant some seeds uh, for you to think about and discuss as the day moves on um, around that theme of, of partnerships. But um, first, I would just like to say I think we're really living and working in very exciting times right now with respect to rivers, um, particularly here in California and the San Joaquin and its all the rivers that are its tributaries, and of course the Delta. Um, <clears throat> there's some really neat things happening. Uh, I, uh, my parents, uh, Used to, in fact, my folks were dating um, on trips to the San Joaquin River to see salmon um, come up <clears throat> prior to Fryant Dam being built. And so there's some stories I know about my parents from those early days. And then um, stories my grandfather told me of catching salmon in the San Joaquin. And then having been executive director now of the River Parkway Trust for more than 20 years, I've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of uh, seniors in our community that have shared those experiences, and those memories are really riveting. And <clears throat> until just a few years ago, we didn't really know um, that it would be within the cards that we might see a living river in the San Joaquin again. And, um, and that's happening now <clears throat> with the restoration effort. Um, also, some really exciting things happening surrounding the America Great Outdoors initiatives and its um, big focus on river systems within that. Secretary Salazar selecting the San Joaquin River system as one of two high priority projects in the state. And did you know that the San Joaquin River restoration project is one of 12, so one of only 12 major infrastructure projects in the nation that's on the president's dashboard report. And I'll tell you in a minute how you can go take a look at that, but there's 12 high priority infrastructure projects in the nation that's on the White House's dashboard report that they track um, and have highly prioritized then or one of them, so very exciting. <clears throat> that is, of course, coupled with all the challenges and I know, um, <laughs> I don't know all of you, but I know uh, some of the places that you're from and the resources you're working on, and we all have incredible challenges in front of us too. But there are some really exciting things uh, to really, um, to bolster us and, um, and to help uh, because of that, the idea of partnerships and taking advantage of this uh, window of opportunity uh, is uh, really important. So anyhow, um, we'll get into this, into partnerships here. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know how many of you are baseball fans, but if you're a Giants fan, together we're a giant, you recognize right away that I've robbed somebody's marketing slogan here. Um, but in thinking about putting together a presentation on partnerships, uh, this thing, together we're giant, just really kind of came through. And um, I apologize if any of you are Dodger fans. That's kind of why I used a little bit of Dodger blue as the background to soften the blow. 
Um, but uh, the idea about what each of us are bringing and um, the whole being greater than the sum of the parts and so forth is, of course, um, at the core of partnerships. And my job is, today is to use the San Joaquin River Partnership as a case study um, to um, encourage you to think more and, and on uh, beyond just the, the, the partnership that I'm working on, we're working on. Um, but first, I just would like to talk a little bit about the intrinsic values of rivers. <clears throat> and um, um, just maybe think about the river in, in terms of the, the parts that, that it's contributing. Um, for example, the recreation, education, and health benefits of rivers. You know, more and more data has come out, of course, in these last few years about the value that river systems provide to our physical health, to our mental health, um, the idea of getting people outdoors and especially now getting kids outside is, um, you know, really kind of pulls at the really core of our health systems. Um, it's seen as getting kids to the river, um, getting kids outside is seen as an important part of um, addressing obesity issues and a, a, a number of other things, and the education opportunities are huge. Um, <clears throat> we probably know it intuitively because we're working with rivers about um, the various ecosystem opportunities with science and so forth, but if you think again about the fisheries that you're all involved with on tributaries and the restoration effort, effort of the San Joaquin, Right now, there's a huge amount of concentration of bringing uh, the best uh, science and thought to the rivers. And we have the opportunity um, as nonprofits and, and agencies and so forth to engage our um, school systems into that process. Um, the idea of flood protection of rivers, reconnecting rivers to their floodplains, enhancing the floodplains. Um, the multiple benefits that rivers bring to flood protection. Clean air and water, of course. Um, obviously, the clean air, uh, water portion. Uh, again, thinking about restoring the San Joaquin River, we've had 60 miles of totally dry river and a riparian forest is going to be recreated there. Well, what contribution is that going to make through carbon sequestration or um, just a cooling off area. Of course, fish and wildlife, um, important resources of our state, um, not only from the enjoy, the, uh, enjoy, enjoying fish and wildlife and the gaming aspect, but of course, um, as folks, as you get closer to the Delta and to the Bay, the um, just direct livelihood it has on fisheries, uh, commercial fisheries. Food production. Um, I'm not sure if riparian economies is a, is a particular classification. I like it. That's why I used it. <laughs> but um, if you think about the, just for example, ecotourism industries, um, I mean, obviously the economy driven by water, um, food production, fisheries. Um, but take that and, of course, uh, pull that circle much broader to how much um, income or revenue is generated in communities that have healthy river systems. Um, it, 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 it is um, a lot. So, I guess what I'd like for you to do for take a second is you could um, build partnerships about any one of these areas. Um, you know, of course, clean water in and of itself, you can build partnerships around. Um, partnerships to advance outdoor recreation. Um, the San Joaquin River uh, Basin uh, watershed is huge with its incredible rivers as tributaries. Uh, partnerships for each of the tributaries or partnerships in subsets of the tributaries. I don't know. 
Um, that's kind of all your jobs to figure out. And uh, sometimes partnerships, I think, uh, the best ones are just sort of organic and you intuitively know it's time to pull yourselves together um, to wrap a partnership around um, protection or advancing, enhancing, um, all number of river. I was working on a couple of projects this week. One of them was a land, it's a conservation easement around, uh, with a property owner in the lower part um, in the Firebaugh area. And if you pull a title report on probably any property along the river and look at it, the um, properties along rivers have incredible um, complex title issues. Uh, claims of the state, claims of the federal government, if there's an irrigation district nearby, claims of the irrigation district, different water rights and how these different easements affects the water rights. Um, each of these properties along the river has incredible um, values. And it's because the river system as a whole has incredible value. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention about these two projects, the other one was a meeting with a developer um, in Madera County. It's a very large development. Um, he's mostly used to developing not anywhere near a river, but just in the flats on Fresno. He's bought this big acreage, and he has these plans, incredible development plans, and he's confused by, well, why is it so complex to do anything near a river? Um, the, the idea about, you know, well, like, it's sort of like the concept of, well, we just put a little bridge over it like you are crossing an irrigation ditch or something, not thinking about the incredible floodplain it has, or the idea that, you know, the public actually has a right to recreate on the river, so how will you, you know, address that? But um, so these river systems, and what I really like, again, getting back to the opportunities that we have right now, is um, I really like what's coming out and thinking about rivers as ecosystem infrastructure. I just love that um, approach. There's an institute out of Stanford that's a partnership, the Woods Institute, with uh, Nature Conservancy and others as part of it. But um, if you just go, if you just Google Woods Institute, Stanford, you can go read some of the publications coming out of there. And this whole idea about um, uh, the larger, you know, the royal we of our communities beginning to really kind of understand uh, rivers as incredible uh, ecosystem infrastructure. Um, well, I'm going to move into. Uh, the San Joaquin River Partnership, which is a partnership I was um, a part of. Julie Rentner is a part of that as well. Jeremy here today. Um, but I thought what I would do is just use it as an example and tell the story of how we were formed, uh, which uh, we um, actually came together in 2009. and. Uh, have this title of a working river project, which is really centered on restoring the river and the multiple benefit projects that we can look at as the river as the whole. So actually our partnership is interested in the whole of the San Joaquin River. Uh, if you were looking for uh, one photo that might say, why did you form, this was it. I mean, this might be a shock to you, but we sent our scientists out and we found indications that this was not a healthy river system. <laughs> and uh, this is at a spot called Gravelly Ford, which is roughly halfway between Fresno and Firebond, the main stem. And of course, water is flowing again now doing, due to the restoration effort. Um, in terms of who's part of our partnership, there's 13 of us now. Um, they're listed here. And in the handout, um, again, actually, there one joined since this handout, Trout Unlimited. So if you are going, Trout Unlimited is part of us now. Um, the initiatives we have, um, there are many. Um, I kind of tried to boil it down to just a few here. Um, supporting the San Joaquin River restoration, of course, very central. 
to what we're doing, enhancing the ecosystem. We have this sort of motto of restoration plus, but the idea of our nonprofit groups bringing the value add to this multi-agency effort to restore the river, connecting people to the river. I'll tell you um, in a second, but we've, we have a vision document for San Joaquin River Blue Way, which is all about connecting people to the river through um, outdoor recreation opportunities. Um, just promoting uh, the overall social economic benefits of restoration. We have our partnership as a meeting um, next week with Congressman Costa to look at seeing if a restoration uh, program within a community college in Fireball can be initiated, uh, ways to develop workforce as well as engage people, and then facilitating land conservation transactions. But um, I am not so much wanting to tell you about the partnership and what we do. Um, you can read about it in the handout. I mostly thought I would spend a little bit of time going through how um, we formed and just using um, one source for you know, keys to successful partnership, they listed four, clarifying the purpose, letting form follow function, involving the right people, and getting it in writing. Um, I'll use each of those four and just kind of tell you how those elements worked for us. Um, <clears throat> and clarifying the purpose, um, when our partnership, uh, first started gathering, we didn't even know we were going to be a partnership. Our story is that um, uh, the River Parkway, um, my organization, the River Parkway Trust, um, was working on resource bonds in the state legislature with a consultant we use, Conservation Strategy Group. And Leslie Friedman Johnson there kind of took me aside and said, you've got to have a vision for the whole river. We can't just be looking at the parkway reach when we're talking to legislators. They want to know, well, what's this whole river thing about? Um, so we brought our nonprofit friends together, and when we started on the partnership, actually what uh, we thought we were doing was getting folks together around the table to work on a vision statement, and we put it up on the wall, have a couple meetings, and then we'll all have a vision statement. Um, but what we found out was um, something uh, different than that. As we met and went through, um, and this is this particular um, handbook's tool in terms of looking at um, partnerships, maybe be thinking about what type of um, partnership you're in um, or where you're at within it. For example, there's different ways of working together. Um, there's just cooperating. <clears throat> Maybe you're getting together to share ideas like we're doing today. Uh, maybe put together an event. Um, there's coordination where you're actually, you know, actually going to do a project together. Um, and then a collaboration is something that is uh, maybe more durable than a single project, but multiple ones or ones that you see um, going on over a particular period of time. Um, <clears throat> but as we move through, I would say we were in this cooperative stage working on a vision statement, and then after two or three me meetings, we kind of skipped this coordinating <laughs> column and uh, recognized we were really talking about forming a collaborative. Uh, where we were going to intentionally, essentially bond and um, do something over a period of years. Um, <clears throat> this other uh, successful key, letting form follow function, the, the idea behind it is that everybody's got tons of stuff to do, of course, and um, keep it simple. Yeah. Um, and so our partnership, we have essentially three work groups, a program work group, a communications work group, and a governance group. <clears throat> and um, through those three kind of forms, we get our work done together. And we also recognize the individual members' strengths. Um, 
you know, not everybody's obviously going to, we aren't going to do everything together. We have a couple of projects where three of us are working on one. We have a couple of projects where a couple of us are working on a different one. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the collaborative has sort of got it all going, um, even though others aren't part of the specific project. Um, <clears throat> this one is probably one that we spent a lot of time on, actually, a couple of organizing meetings of involving the right people. And in our particular case, we decided to, our partnership would be nonprofit conservation organizations. And there was a lot of discussion as to how we got to that. You won't see agencies listed. Um, and I think our thought about a conservation group is really um, broad. Um, for example, we would like to see um, uh, we would like to partner with some environmental justice groups and so forth. But um, we essentially, um, in our charter, we have some key um, goals and basically the definition of being, of, if you're interested in being a San Joaquin River partner, in our partnership, there's a dedication of time and resources to make and then a sign off um, of what our goals are and uh, 501c3 status. That is essentially it. But also we looked at, you know, well, who do we want to have in? For example, I mentioned Trout Unlimited just joined us and we, um, that was a mutual interest, of course, but we definitely wanted to have that fishery resource as part of our partnership. Um, Trusting relationships, um, you know, trust is always a good thing, huh? <laughs> um, get it in writing. In our particular case, once we kind of came through that um, process and recognizing that we had a long-term effort and really wanted to work together, uh, we had some help in looking at a charter. And actually, we, we um, look, there's a Sierra, uh, a Northern Sierra partnership that <clears throat> the Trust for Public Land and, and uh, several other organizations, the Nature Conservancy and so forth, are a part of. And uh, we ended up using theirs as essentially a model of our partnership. So the San Joaquin River Partnership is not a legal entity. It's 13 folks that have joined together, but we do have a formal um, charter, which outlines our responsibilities and that kind of thing. Um, so, <clears throat> um, I wanted to, because, you know, the San Joaquin River is really broad, and the America Great Outdoors Initiative is really broad, and I thought what I wanted to do is actually just um, this little paragraph in Secretary Salazar's designation of the San Joaquin as one of the two high priority projects in California. It's part of his report um, to, the, to the nation, but I'm just gonna read this. Outlining some of the country's most promising ways to reconnect Americans to the natural world, Secretary Ken Salazar today highlighted two projects in the state of California restoring flows and providing recreation opportunities on the San Joaquin River and approving recreational trails along the Los Angeles River and San Gabriel River. Representing what states believe are among the best investments in the nation. I love that, best investments in the nation. They are. I mean, just think of all of our communities on the tribs and the rivers. I mean, that's why we're there. And I think there's an awakening happening in the larger community. I think probably everyone in this room has been engaged in this for a long time. But I sense it in working with our local business council and um, talking with others that um, perhaps when they would, might have just disconnected economy from healthy river systems, I think now there's people are starting to see those things together. Um, well, you can read more about the partnership in the handout. 
I wanted to tell you um, where to get the San Joaquin River Blue Way Vision document. Um, I've got a couple of hard copies. Primarily, we're distributing it um, via the internet. And um, I didn't hand this out, but I'll put, put those back by the muffins. Uh, there's a, a sheet here on how you can get it downloaded. The partnership has a website. And, um, and I, I want to leave you um, with just maybe some thoughts in terms of maybe getting going uh, for partnerships. Um, my wife and I, our two boys are grown and live in the Bay Area, and they're part of a rock band, and they have been for a few years. When I was going through putting the partnership together, uh, this presentation together, I started thinking, you know, all this sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, organizational approach is really good and we need to look at it. But, you know, what I really think of as being a really strong partnership is our boys' band. They've been doing it for a few years and they, you know, they have one of these 15-foot vans and they all pile in it and they go, you know, across the country and they all come back and they even play better music when they left <laughs> and they're together and they work really well together and I'm kind of thinking, God, how do people do that? So anyway, I looked to a band's uh, blog essentially and pulled off some tips on bands of uh, thinking partnerships. Awesome bands don't just happen overnight. The more you practice together, the better you'll likely to be. Listen to the other players. I don't mean their opinions, though important. I mean listen to what they're doing musically. By not playing at strategic plan uh, at strategic times, the song may actually have more impact. The bass player and the drummer need to think as a single unit so that they can set the groove for the rest of the band and lay out when it's your bandmates turn to so solo. Have fun at your gigs. Be upbeat, open, and pleasant in demeanor. Moody folk are damned hard to work with. <laughs> and then my favorite, everybody loads in, everybody loads out. Nobody in the band is important enough that they don't have to carry crap. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, some things to think about for partnerships, and it's great to be with you today, and we'll get to talk. question is, there's a lot of change in local government funding. You didn't mention local government very much in your presentation. I just wondered, is local government play a big role and has that been affected by cutbacks in local uh, government uh, funding that's yeah. uh, currently underway? Um, well, as it affects um, my organization, the San Joaquin River Parkway and Conservation Trust, it's hugely affected. At the city of Fresno actually let their parks director and assistant parks director go. We have capital funds made available to the San Joaquin River Conservancy for parkway facilities. It all has to be capital dollars. And we actually have permitted uh, projects, trails, uh, public restrooms, river access sites, all planned, permitted, ready to go, but we can't, um, we can't turn the ground because there isn't operation and maintenance dollars. So this thing uh, locally has affected us hugely, and we're trying to be part of that, figuring out those solutions. Um, but the other thing, I'm going to contrast that with Adrian Cheney, who is the parks director of Patterson. Do any of you know her? Uh, she's got an incredible, she's the parks director of city of Patterson. They have a parks di director, City of Fresno doesn't, and they have an incredible um, program that she's put together over these last couple of years, an incredible source of energy and has a lot going on. So 
there's um, maybe two, two contrasts there in terms of local government. So different, it's probably unique to your situation. Yeah, if it's if it actually were enacted, it's a huge problem. It, um, yeah, the question is is um, how much of a problem would HR eighteen thirty seven be? Well, HR eighteen thirty seven is a bill introduced by Congressman Nunes and passed um, by Congress uh, by the House <clears throat> that would actually defund, um, well, it actually repeals the San Joaquin River Restoration Settlement Act. Um, but there's also, it has a couple of different sections. One is the repeal of the river restoration, and the other affects the delta. Um, and so it, it actually w would be huge. And um, the partnership um, as a uh, well, we're not a legal entity, so we can't lobby, but some of the individual members within the partnership are way on top of that and working hard. So it would be a big problem. I know the, uh, it's in uh, the Senate subcommittee right now. What, uh, do you know what the status of the uh, legislation is? Well, <clears throat> um, the risk is, the risk as we see it, or I'll, let's just say the risk as I see it is that if it got attached to must-pass legislation, we'd be, that's probably where the jam is. I don't think either senator of California, well, I know the, neither senator of California is in favor of that bill, um, and particularly, well, so the risk is if it got attached to some kind of must-pass legislation. Um, there's also the White House, the president came out with a statement the evening before the House's vote and took a position on the bill saying that if it passed and got to his desk, he'd veto it. Um, so there's some good things related to that, but, but nobody's taking that as a lot of comfort. 